So Naomi Osaka, over the weekend, there was a match at Indian Wells that took a turn to the wild side uh, when a heckler made an appearance shouting, Naomi, you suck! And the uh, woman in the audience there shouting down from somewhere in the crowd of roughly 10,000 at uh, Indian Wells there. This was in the first set of the match on Saturday. Now, that insult, something that has been said to just about every athlete, along the history of sports, uh, but that insult was enough to rattle, rattle Naomi Osaka, a four-time Grand Slam champ. At the time, she trailed 3-0 in the first set, and she then pleaded with the chair umpire to address the audience. She, in the middle of the match, she wanted to grab the microphone and lecture the crowd at the stadium there in Indian Wells. She said, can I borrow your microphone? Uh, she's very polite. Can I borrow your microphone? She asked. I just want to say something. Uh, I'm not going to curse. I don't curse. Uh, it's just weighing on my heart as she pl- played the heart card from the bottom of the deck. So Osaka uh, was not allowed, was not allowed uh, to use the microphone. A shocking, shocking case of adults being adults. Uh, tournament officials determined that they would find the, the heckler because you can't tell someone they suck, apparently, Uh, You're not allowed to do that, and that person would be ejected if the match was interrupted for a second time. So that was the statement that was made. Now, the heckler was was kept at bay, and Osaka finished the match. She probably wishes she hadn't done that. Uh, She dropped the first set 6-0 and then would lose the next next set 6-4, and so she gone uh, out of the round of 64 at the tournament there at Indian Wells. Now, after the after the, the event had ended there on Saturday, Osaka... Uh, was eventually given a microphone, and uh, she told the crowd that she had flashbacks to uh, hecklers being mean to the Williams sisters years ago, and that's why she reacted the way she did with the waterworks and all that. So let us discuss. All right, does this story say more about the fan or more about Naomi Osaka? And the answer here, the arrow is clearly pointing at the tennis player, Osaka, all day and all night. All right, so I've got teardrop Roman Coliseum. And catchphrase. And we will connect all of this together, and that will be the foundation of this Malor monologue. So first of all, is it true that we are stuck in a time warp, and we have gone down this road before, and here we are. It's a deja vu type moment. Of course it is. There is a common theme here with Naomi Osaka struggling to deal with the requirements of her job. And everyone says, makes excuses for her, and it's not her fault. It's somebody else's fault. They, they always cover for her being incapable of doing her job. Last year, she decided not to attend news conferences during the French Open. You might remember that. We talked about it on the show, got a lot of attention. Some of the political bloggers thought that was interesting, our take on it. Uh, but she decided she didn't want to talk to the media anymore because she needed to manage her stress and anxiety meaning she was unable to meet the requirements of your job. Part of being a professional athlete is to deal with the media because there's a lot of money involved in that. The media is the messenger. That's how that works. And when you do your social media thing, you're preaching to the converted already. And the whole point of mass media is to reach people that aren't already toe-sucking followers of yours. So anyway, Naomi laid it on thick here. Uh, She knows, yet again, that she can cash in here. There were ulterior motives in play. I saw the the clips over the weekend uh, and claiming that victimhood equals big money. She knows this. She's living that life. She knows that you can get really wealthy playing the victim card. Every teardrop is worth extra endorsement dollars. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. No tissue needed. The advertisers apparently eat this stuff up by virtue signaling. She was able to make this all about her. Right? You lose the tennis match, but the, the story, and she didn't know she was going to lose before the match, unless she did. But the story is her being triggered by some random jamoke in the crowd, right? Some jabroni in the crowd heckling her. And it's not like, you know, it's some dude. If this was a dude, the story would be, oh, this is, you know, sexist. It's a, a man attacking a female athlete. But you can't use that card because it was another woman. It was girl on girl heckling is what it was. And, and here she is, Osaka, unable to control the raw emotion of athletic competition. And this was nothing. All right, this, you suck. That, this, no, 
nothing. That's happy Gilmore heckling is what that is. It's child's play. And Osaka asking, imagine the chutzpah. That's what my grandfather would say. Imagine the chutzpah of asking for the microphone to address the crowd during the match and thinking that you could get away with that. And like, oh, yeah, they're just going to let me. I'm sur- and to be honest with you, I'm surprised they didn't allow her to address the, the crowd there at Indian Wells. But the, the funniest thing about this, her opponent's like, all right, let's just keep playing. And she was over there waiting to serve, and you're not allowed to address the fans during the match. Like, I'm not even a tennis guy, and even I know that. And so uh, clearly there was a safe space that was needed here that didn't, apparently they need to to get that uh, over there at Indian Wells. Now, second, uh, Naomi Osaka is the world's highest paid active female athlete. That's why this story matters. This is not a chump. She's the face of, uh, of active female athletes as far as the top of the money game. Osaka's right there. And this kind of activity makes all female athletes look bad. Right? Makes them all look bad. Toughen up Buttercup, right? Well, we are advocates of the fan bill of rights. And I am a supporter of heckling. I know there's a war on heckling right now in the sporting world, but heckling goes with the territory. It's part of the job. And not everyone, it's going to blow you away. This is the most amazing hot take I've ever had. Not everyone's going to like you. And especially if you're in the public eye, people aren't going to like you. Weakness will be attacked. And you you buy a ticket, and part of the agreement is you pay a lot of money, you pay way too much for these tickets to these sporting events. And if you don't like what you're seeing, if you want to get involved in the activity, you can heckle. And if you can't stand what's going on as, as you being an athlete, if you can't handle the smack talk, then you should probably do something else. You should probably do something else because it's part of the deal. And we need to stop coddling the athletes that are triggered by the heckling. I mean, just, just listen, they're cottage cheese enough. And as far as, oh, people need to change. I, I've heard a lot of that. Well, the hecklers need to stop heckling. Right, let me tell you something stupid. Humans are hardwired to heckle at sporting events. This goes back to the Roman Colosseum days. Even before that, the reason David and Goliath was such a big upset was not only the gambling line, but also the heckling. People remember it because Goliath got heckled. They said, Goliath, you suck. Did Goliath grab the microphone and say, wait a minute, I'd like to address the crowd here. No, no. And this is not only a sports issue. This is really about any live performance. I love comedy. I love stand-up comedy. You go to a comedy club, and I've been to a comedy club in a while, but you go to a comedy club, and first of all, I don't let you use your phone anymore to record it. You can't do that. That's been the way for a long time. Uh, but also, there's certain comedians back in the old days that loved when there was a troll. The, the act was actually better when there'd be somebody heckling. The, the comedian could then just attack that person. It was wonderful, and it was great. But th- this crosses over. It's not just a sports story. It crosses over. It, I mentioned we're, we're, it's in our DNA. As, as human beings, right? If you want to compete on the big stage, whether it's athletically, politically, comedy, you name it, uh, you're going to have to handle this. Any live performance from vaudevillian comedy shows, the the term peanut galleries uh, started from that. The, the people in the back would chuck peanuts at the uh, the crowd or at the at the stage rather if they didn't like the show that was being performed there. Uh, politicians. If you study politics at all, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, uh, whistle-stop tours, people heckle. That's what they do. You're bombarded with trolls. It's part of life when you're in the spotlight. And th- these athletes like Naomi Osaka say, oh, no, this, they're being mean to me. Oh, stop. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. Uh, final thought. So while financially, we mentioned Naomi Osaka is laughing all the way to the bank, I'm sure there'll be several think pay- pieces written here and a uh, number of the bleeding hearts in the media will say, oh, it's so sad. Tennis has to do something here. Put a stop because somebody said Naomi Osaka sucks. It was a woman. How dare you? Uh, it is odd that we have gotten to this place. Like that so much of the media now is sympathetic to these weak, pathetic athletes in particular. It's a 180 from where we used to be. And we're, we're, when I was raised, for generations... The greatest athletes were fueled by the haters. That was jet fuel. It was overpriced gasoline for the haters. And that made their performances even better. 
right? Made their performances even better, that they were inspired by those that doubted them. And they would just laugh at the, the peons below them. And there's a brilliant catchphrase that summed up this whole mantra, and it was used to sell deodorant back in the day. In the, in the 1980s, Gillette ran a commercial. The catchphrase was, never let them see you sweat. And that slogan captured the way things used to be. Now, that was to sell deodorant, but the, the, the greater meaning makes all the sense in the world, that you need to maintain grace under fire, that if you weren't good, no one would react to you. They only react to you because you're someone of a great skill set. And so this, this should be something you wear with pride. If somebody says you suck, you should be happy about that because you're better than them. They're below you, and they are mocking you, trying to get under your skin. But yet here we have an athlete, Naomi Osaka, who is so clueless on this issue that she's uh, trying to talk with the heckler, talk with the crowd in the middle of the match. And what is the golden rule here? The golden rule is, it's very simple, addressing trolls. It's kind of like when you go to the beach, right? We, we used this analogy before. We'll use it again. When you go to the beach, it's like feeding the seagulls. It seems like a good idea. The seagulls want food. They're walking around. They're looking, you know, flying down, walking around looking for food. But if you feed one seagull, what happens? You ever done that before? You've done that before. You know what happens, right? What Immediately, dozens, it's attack of the birds, will appear, and they start squealing and squawking and all that stuff. And you're overwhelmed. And you got to like make a run for the car. Right? All of that. But if you are at the top of your profession, why would you empower some knuckle-dragging Neanderthal in the crown to get under your skin? And, and you've just let, let the entire world know your weakness. And I think what we have to get back to with kids is nursery rhymes. We have to teach nursery rhymes across the globe here because nursery rhymes have a lot of great life lessons. For example, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never harm me. Of course, now it's been updated. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but mean names will certainly make me super wealthy. Boo-hoo-hoo. And uh, can, we, can we develop through the labs some kind of thick skin that we can give to these very soft, coddled athletes who can't handle a little toughness from the crown? Uh, there's got to be something we can, like a pill or something we can give them there, some kind of vaccine so they can grow thick skin. And you, you don't get headlines for blocking out the noise. Uh, apparently, you need to be a drama queen. And that's what you need to be. And then, you know, we, listen, that's just not only a second. LeBron James has done this recently. We've seen a lot of NBA players have had fans kicked out or attempted to get fans kicked out because they said mean things. Oh, I don't like 